Okay, good morning, everyone. So um, I'm Antoine Cabot. I'm uh, um, Cloud Computing Lab Manager at uh, uh, Private Research Institute in, based in France. And uh, today we talk about Watcher, a resource optimizer for OpenStack, plans for Newton and beyond. So um, first of all, I will introduce you to uh, the Watcher mission and the key contributors we have in this project uh, for uh, 18 months now. And uh, then Joe Cropper from IBM will introduce in more, in more details about the architecture of Watcher and the uh, other OpenStack components we are using in, 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 this, in this project. And finally, Susan, Susan Bale from, uh, from, from Intel uh, will talk about what we did during the previous cycles, uh, so Mitaka cycle uh, specifically, and then the plans we have, the plan of actions we have for for the next uh, release for Newton. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them at the end. Uh, please use the mic. Um, so about Watcher mission. So uh, as, as I said before, uh, Watcher is a resource optimization service for OpenStack. So as uh, I presented it a lot of uh, many times during this summit, uh, many people told me that there are many different ways to do resource optimization, so, uh, and that's right. It really depends the uh, uh, kind of cloud you are running. So it could be public, private cloud. It could be, you could use uh, small VM, big VM containers, uh, uh, small flavors, big flavors. So every kind of cloud are different. So uh, building an optimization ser service on top of this is pretty hard. So what we decided to provide with Watcher is a framework, so that's, this is very important to understand that we don't provide any uh, magic solution to optimize your cloud and reduce your TCO. We just provide a framework uh, where you can build your own strategy adapted to your own environment. So <clears throat> the idea is really to provide all the ba base code that will be able to handle a strategy and then run it on top of your infrastructure. So uh, in, in, in this way, uh, we provide a pluggable architecture uh, that, you, that, that allows you to uh, provide strategy. So we, of course, we provide basic strategies like basic consolidation or uh, energy aware optimizations like outlet temperature. Uh, so this is something we will talk in more details after. But uh, the idea is it's really easy to build your own strategy adapted to your own goals or, or or uh, uh, features you want to have in your, in your cloud. So this project, uh, the project has out-of-the-box value, so it means you can just run it on top of your infrastructure and, and then build your, your own strategy. Um, many people during this summit told me that, okay, that's cool. Uh, in fact, it's kind of like DRS for OpenStack. So I said, okay, it's, it's like, so if you are familiar with the VMware environment, uh, it's, it's, it could be like DRS, but the difference here is that we allows you to provide your own strategy, your own algorithm. So uh, we, 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 the idea is not to build a black box. Uh, the idea is to provide a way to uh, build your own strategy of optimization. So some uh, contributors we have today in this project. So we started this project 18 months ago. And now we have IBM, uh, Beacom, and Intel as main contributors on this project. And we also have uh, contributions from uh, uh, University Lab in Zurich, um, and AT AT&T, Walmart has deep interest into this project. Uh, also ZT, Orange, uh, and, and also a, a, a team in, in Russia. So we are lucky enough to have a team all over the world and the uh, watcher code is evolving all the time, 24-24. So yeah, that's, uh, that's great. Of course, during the next, the next cycle, the Newton cycle, we hope to have many more contributors on this project, and we plan to uh, be under the big tent during the, the, this cycle. Everybody in the room, hopefully, will be their, their names and companies will be up here next release. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I should also say that we have uh, currently some blueprints that needs um, uh, cont new contributors, so we are really welcoming people coming to, to this project. 
So coming back to the key features we provide in, in Watcher. So um, Watcher provide uh, cloud optimization, uh, for example, using live migration uh, in case of imbalance detection. So we, we will look at, your, at, at all the CPU metrics we can get from the telemetry system and then take decision about migrating one VM to, from one host to another to, uh, to, uh, in, uh, in case of balancing the, the, the load. Um, so as I said previously, previously uh, it's a very flexible plugin structure. So as we can discuss later, you can add strategy, you can also add uh, actions, uh, you can add goals uh, in, in, in Watcher. So everything is, uh, could say, plug and play. And we provide on-the-shelf uh, optimization strategy today based on CPU, RAM, and energy consumption. So we have... Uh, Today, three, three modes in mind. Uh, so the advice mode is the default mode to run Watcher. So you will install Watcher, and then uh, Watcher will run an audit on your infrastructure. So you just ask him to run an audit. And then uh, after the audit, you will get an action plan. So uh, a plan of actions to be run on your infrastructure to be optimized. So this is the advice mode. So you, the, you, the administrator, as all, the, uh, can really say, OK, uh, here is uh, the audit results, uh, that's good, but I don't want to run it because there is something wrong with, with, with this, so I, I don't want to run it. So it's, it's really, uh, you can really choose what you, what you want. And, and there is an active mode uh, for always on optimization. So the idea here is to uh, provide a way to constantly optimize your infrastructure by, by running uh, audits every, ten, every, one hour, every hour or every 10 minutes if you want and then run all the, the optimization uh, automatically. And finally, there is a verbose mode for uh, detailed optimization decision tracking. So we will allow you to run step by step the optimization. So uh, I will, uh, so Joe will, will go into more details <coughs> about the uh, watcher inside the, the OpenStack ecosystem. Yeah, thanks Antoine. Um, so we wanted to kind of show up a, a picture here that kind of talks about how does Watcher interface with the rest of the OpenStack components. Um, of course, there's a lot of different things we can do with optimization, and there's a lot of projects out in OpenStack that do a lot of really great things. And so rather than, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel in those cases, we're trying to leverage the services that are provided by the other projects to essentially optimize the data center. So if you think of this as sort of a hub and spoke type model, you know, and this is just a very brief example of some of the things we can do. So, I mean, Watcher can sort of sit in the middle, and then, you know, for Antoine was mentioning, you can do VM live migration. So, right, we just leverage the services that are provided by Nova to invoke VM live migration. Of course, uh, we use Keystone for all of the authentication, Oslo for all the common libraries. Um, in terms of getting the data, you know, Watcher isn't responsible for collecting all these metrics. There's other projects. Um, you know, such as Solometer, Minoska, and such that can help us with that. So we're trying to leverage the value that all of the other uh, uh, projects in the ecosystem provide, ultimately to deliver Watcher. So again, uh, you know, as and, and I think that's one of the cool things with OpenStack is more projects are introduced and they provide a lot of value. Watcher can then continue to leverage those and plug in. So again, not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to leverage the services that are provided uh, by the other projects. Um, and again, this can really enable new ways to get additional TCO uh, and, and, re and reduce the TCO for your data centers. <clears throat> so this picture here kind of shows um, an overview of the overall Watcher workflow. And I have to admit, a lot, so there's a lot of things that are on this picture that are very theoretical. Some things we've actually worked on implementing. And there's some things that, are, that we need to do in the future. And, and they're sort of color coded as such. So the things that are green, we've spent a lot of time in those areas. Things that are, you know, orange, you know, we've done a little bit of work and things that are red, we, we need to put a lot more work in there. And frankly, that's what we're going to be focusing on for some of the upcoming cycles. So if you think of this as a continuous optimization loop that's um, continuously evaluated and it sort of starts at the bottom uh, with the monitor. So this is all about Solometer where we're actually trying to go ahead and, and collect data, collect metrics, you know, what type, what type of CPU utilization, memory utilization, IOPs, trying to get all this information from various data sources. Then that information can be analyzed and aggregated um, in, in a way that can then be used. Uh, we have a profiler component. Again, the idea would be that you could eventually predict and, 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 and determine what might happen in the future after seeing patterns and whatnot. Uh, and then you have the actual optimizer, the thing that's actually going to work on trying to put together your optimization plan. And as you see an input to there, there's different objectives and constraints. 
So as an example, um, you know, Congress could have different constraints that could eventually feed into this, or um, the, the Nova scheduler people have created things like um, uh, uh, co-location rules, you know, anti-affinity and affinity. All these things can be input, and when Watcher tries to make scheduling decisions and make plans, right, we can leverage some of these other constraints and, uh, that, that other uh, projects have defined in the ecosystem. Then we go from the optimized step into the plan. So the planning is ultimately where, <clears throat> you know, uh, Watcher will decide that, you know, virtual machine uh, A needs to be migrated from host one to host two. It puts together a set of steps that can be acted upon, and then they're all ordered. And some, some steps could perhaps happen in parallel, some things need to run serially, uh, and then ultimately you have the, the executor, the thing, the applier that goes in and runs all these steps. And this, again, is a continual loop. This isn't, you know, sometimes when we talk to people, you know, sometimes they have this notion of that staples button, right? You press the button, okay, that everything, that was easy, it was perfect. That's not the case, right? I mean, the clouds are very dynamic in nature, so things are never gonna be perfect, and you need to continually evaluate this in a loop to kind of, you know, the idea is that after this loop runs, things were better than they were before, but you're gonna need to continue to do this over and over and over again. So this, this picture here shows a little bit of an architectural overview. So, so again, that last one was a little bit more theoretical in what we want to do. This actually showcases a lot of the components that exist today in Watcher and sort of how some of the things exist. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner, uh, and, and by the way, you know, this, this model tries to adopt very similar architectures to that of a lot of the other OpenStack projects, right? So we have, there's Watcher CLIs, um, uh, we have a, a, a plugin for uh, Horizon, <clears throat> and basically that's where the administrator or uh, the, the engine can automatically invoke uh, the, the, the various Watcher APIs. And it comes in through a Watcher API, so it's all REST, just like every other OpenStack service. Um, there's the OpenStack bus, so all the different Watcher services all communicate with each other uh, over the message queue, again, just like everything else in OpenStack. Um, we have the uh, Watcher database, which, which is, you know, MariahDB based. Um, and then, you know, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you have the components where we're actually gathering metrics. So these are, again, Solometer. We have integration with Solometer today. Um, things like Minasca will come in the future. So any, any hard lines you see here, those are integrations we have today. The dotted lines are things that we would like to do in the future. And then again, all the Solometer data goes into, we basically have time series databases, which is uh, for the reference implementation. We use InfluxDB for that. Um, and then you have the, uh, sort of on the, in the center there, you have the applier, the planner, and, and the optimizer. And really the planner and the applier are sort of a logical subset um, of the overall optimizer. And again, the planner is the component that actually, again, um, takes all of the, uh, the, the optimization data, or the, 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 the metric data, puts together that plan, and then it's, it's, uh, it's, it's executed. And, and if you look in the upper right-hand corner, we currently have interaction talking with Nova, again, to do VM live migrations. Um, you know, eventually, uh, there's a lot of, of, of uh, you know, storage-based optimizations we could do, networks. We want to have integration with Neutron and Cinder and things moving forward. <clears throat> So this next chart here kind of talks about the overall workflow. What are some of the objects or entities you deal with within Watcher? Um, and I'll kind of go through this, and there's a, the, 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 the subsequent slide actually has a, a better picture of this. But basically the first thing you do, Antoine was sort of talking about in his initial uh, uh, discussion, that you really have different strategies and, and, and goals that you want to achieve. Um, and we, we provide with our reference implementation, there's a few out of box things that can give people value. But one of the real benefits of Watcher is that it's very extensible. So you can go in and you know, add different uh, plans or strategy that's gonna help you in what you're trying to achieve with your clouds or data center. So you create a goal, um, and then you create an audit template that gets connected to this goal. And the audit template is sort of a one-time creation. You, you, you create one of these. And then uh, in step three, the administrator, or you could have a service that does this in an automated fashion, goes ahead and actually uh, cr creates, creates an audit, which then uses the audit template. So just as an example, a perfect a strategy, uh, an example of a strategy might be, I want to stripe all the virtual machines in my cloud, or I want to you know, pack, I want to fill up one host, move on to the next one. So those are examples, and, and, and that can be uh, some, some really simple examples of a type of a goal you would create. And then the audit creates all of the plans or all of the, uh, uh, you know, the, all of the different steps that need to be generated. Um, and then the applier, again, goes in and apply those. And so if you look at this in a picture form, I think this does um, you know, a nice job. And, and by the way, we'll, we'll have these charts up so people can come back and also reference these as well. But I, I think if you look over at the administrator, um, the administrator triggers one of these audits. And again, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, again, that's where you have that goal. So that's you know, the, the one-time configuration that, again, 
you know, we provide a few out of box things, but then, you know, people, contributors can add additional goals and strategies to, you know, whatever your heart's desire is. Um, so the administrator triggers one of these audits, and then based on that audit, they can, you can do that from the CLI, again, or you could have some Chrome-like job or having, having it happen in an automated fashion over and over and over, and it generates that plan. Again, and then the plan is a series of steps that can be executed, and, and you know, that's all using and modifying the resources in your cloud, moving VMs, resizing VMs, maybe you know, eventually um, you know, moving volumes around, things of that nature. Um, so I guess what I want to do now is turn it over to Suzanne uh, from Intel, and she'll talk a little bit about some of the outlet strategies that Intel uh, helped develop here, uh, and then talk a little bit about some of what we accomplished in Metaka and our plans moving forward uh, into uh, Newton. Sorry. Thank you, Joe. So as Joe said, my name is Suzanne. I'm uh, with Intel. And uh, some of the things that we contributed are um, to watch or besides just uh, hardening the infrastructure are some of the algorithms that we've been working on with um, customers uh, around data center optimization. And, um, and so one of the examples that we've had is this uh, outlet temperature where um, some of our customers are trying to raise the temperature in the data center, look at the spec for the server, Everything looks fine, but then some of the component behind the servers might start melting because the temperature gets too, big, too high. And so um, just as a quick example, given that the, this um, strategy is pretty simple, I, we just wanted to go over, you know, what are the things that we're actually doing in this strategy. So we take the, tele so um, in this case, the outlet temperature uh, require a server that has IPMI and the power thermal on the, um, kind of in Intel uh, power thermal. And given that it has those uh, features, you can actually read those telemetries out of accelerometer and then uh, start applying this strategy. And this was just a kind of a quick examples where we started by looking at, you know, does this hy hypervisor have outlet temperature? If it does, then we filter those and we look at, okay, is the temperature, the outlet temperature for that hypervisor over the threshold? So it, it's a kind of a simple, algorithm in this case where we look at the temperature, is it over the threshold? If it is, yes, then we can take an action. If it's not, we just leave it alone. Um, in the case where, you know, the temperature is over the threshold, then we have to pick a new VM. And so we use the constraints that we were talking about that are already in the system to pick a new uh, VM. And then uh, given, you know, once we do that, then uh, we eventually end up with the action of doing the live migration of um, the VM. One of the important things here also, and you'll see this in, in some of the, uh, the blueprints that we have for the Newton releases, it's great to be able to do this, but it would be, it's nice to actually understand what, what, I, what is the administrator going to get out of this. And so we have a blueprint around uh, efficiency indicator where um, it's, uh, the, the plan is to come back with an efficient indicator to the admin before the admin actually triggers this action so that the admin knows ahead of time what the benefit is going to be for um, this move. So if we look at um, this, uh, as this, this slide kind of tells a little the story of Watcher and where we're heading. So uh, as you can see, the project was a real, originally started in November of 14 by, um, I guess, become, and then uh, we met in September 15 uh, at a kind of a meetup, and, and that's really where, when the project kind of got kicked off. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, we, we're now following uh, all the OpenStack uh, processes and have been working really hard during the Mitaka release to be, behave and it, like an OpenStack project. And, and we've been looking at uh, several strategies during the Mitaka release. One of the things that is we want to do as soon as we actually come back from this uh, uh, summit is um, to start applying to be, get under the big tent. I think we, it's very important for us to be under the big tent and we are re ready. We've had several talks with several of the TC members and they seem to be agree that we are ready. And so you, as you can see here, that should happen you know, uh, bef during the Newton release. So in terms of um, what did we do during the Mitaka release? So our kind of goals or 
uh, focus were really twofold. We wanted to improve the framework of the water project as well as look into uh, creating additional tr strategies. And the reason we wanted to make sure we had strategies along with uh, a better framework was having a great framework without strategies isn't very useful. But, uh, you know, now we have, uh, we're starting a small library of strategies that you guys can try out and you can actually customize them. And, and uh, you know, the idea is really here that it, this framework is totally pluggable. So if you decide to create your own strategies and even if you don't want to open source them, it, there is, you know, you can still use them. So going back to what we did uh, during the Mitaka release, we, we really, f again, focused on making sure that we had all our processes uh, set up so that we are a real OpenStack project. So we did uh, the Celometer integration. DevStack, uh, inter we have a DevStack plugin, which means that if you want to try to take it for a spin, it, it installs very nicely in DevStack. And you can, you know, try and uh, try a whole bunch of things. Uh, the, the one thing I think we're the most proud of on this list is really the multi-node support on the gate. Because one of the things that we've done, and I think very few projects have this at this point, is that as you submit um, your patch, uh, as part of the testing, we're setting up a, a, a dev stack with two compute nodes and are doing live migration as we are testing. So we, we're really happy about, you know, being, a, we're actually doing real testing of the features and not just the Tempest test or um, some of the, you know, inline testing. And then uh, the other things we've been working on is really um, making it easier to, for example, have parameters like threshold optimization passed into the strategies and, of course, also the watcher dashboard. So, as I was mentioning earlier, the, the, thing, the kind of second focus for the Mitaka release was really uh, creating some uh, strategies that people who wanted to try out uh, watcher could you know, so that they didn't have to make up their own uh, to start out with. And so at this point, we have the outlet temperature strategy based on the thermal telemetry. We also uh, actually, in using other thermal um, telemetries and putting those in salometer for future algorithms around risk minimization of um, different components and um, also some of the other kind of thermal algorithm that we want to put in we being Intel, into the OpenStack. Um, we're looking at, we have several kind of uh, algorithms around rebalancing of VMs. There, it's both, you know, uh, based on usage. We have one around uh, an algorithm for a sta standard deviation strategy. And, um, and I think the important thing here is, uh, so we have three algorithms around rebalancing, and that is really because we've had uh, three company needing different, uh, having different needs and wanting to do different things. And so at this point, everybody has decided, you know, oh, let's contribute them to open, to Watcher. But we could imagine, and we, you know, we could imagine that as this library grow, maybe we'll have like a, like, you know, a Watcher library of algorithm or where you can just pull them down from there so that they're not part of the Watcher itself. but. Again, and like I said, we are, I'm sure, you know, we also are going to get the uh, customers or uh, companies that do not want to open source their algorithm, and that's totally fine. So what are our plans for the Newton release? So one of the things that we, we see a need for is really being able to um, integrate with um, what I would call external, mali sorry, external machine learning la tools and frameworks. So in the case of Intel, we've, we've open sourced something called the Trusted Analytics Platform, where data scientists can sit and create their models and actually uh, c run them continuously and, and train them. And, and so w one of the things we thought is, hey, wouldn't it be great if we took those models and actually had them applied to Watcher. And so we're currently working on a scoring module 
that would allow that to happen so that the watch, watch strategy could actually be based on an external model coming from like, or an ex external scoring engine coming from, in this case, uh, you, it could be TAP or any other external um, machine learning tool. So we're kind of looking at that integration as well. Um, one of our important uh, blueprints this, uh, this uh, release is also going to be the active mode so that we always have the optimization is always running. And you know, we can use that for, again, anomaly detection, but also running um, your, al your algorithm outlet temperature or fan temperature or you know, fan speed or something, anything uh, uh, within uh, your infrastructure. The other thing is we're looking at the verbose mode for uh, detailed optimization so that you can actually debug this in a little better way. I talked to, already talked to you around the efi uh, efficiency indicator uh, that would actually tell um, the admin that as, his, um, as part of the action plan, we would return this e efficiency indicator so that the admin or the operator would know ahead of time what, what kind of improvement can I expect out of my cloud. And so th that is something that we're looking at, into as well. Uh, one of the things uh, that we also want to do is right now uh, an action or an action plan is kind of for your whole cloud. One of the things we want to be able to do is actually uh, create an action plan per entity or per group. So for example, if you have host aggregates, we want to be able to say, create, optimize just for this host aggregate or for this group and not uh, across my whole cloud. And of course, and this is where we want to invite kind of everybody here in the room is to provide more added values optimization strategies. I, I think the strategies are really um, some of the things where, uh, having talked with a lot of you, where a lot of companies are thinking that that's, what, that's the added value of this project is being able to come up with their own strategy, sorry, strategies that can then optimize their cloud. And so, you know, this is really where we're hoping that if you having, you know, that where you, we could, you can start contra contribute and also collaborate with us on the, the on, on Watcher. So if you want to learn more, we have a wiki, we have uh, OpenStack uh, Watcher IRC, we're meeting every week. And so, you know, let us know, come up and talk to us and we hope you want to collaborate with us on this. Thank you. <clears throat> And although we're up here, there's some people from the Watcher dev team I see out there and a few people back there. So again, uh, thanks everybody. I yeah. uh, appreciate your help and everything through this release. So. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions? Yeah. Is this on? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we're Broadcom. We have a data source that is almost analogous to like heat sensors and stuff. But it's real low level with network switches. How would we contribute to this effort? Because obviously we might have data that helps in an optimization scenario, right? So. So yeah, I mean your question is really, so you have different metrics about different compute nodes and things and can, how can you feed that into the system? Yeah, we have an upstream project that, that collects like really level stuff off of our ASICs and silicon and pushes it out and sure. puts, puts it into Manaska. So is it just simply publishing it to Manaska and you discover us or are you looking for, is there something else we would want to do to collaborate with you? I mean, we could talk, I mean, so as if you remember back to, I think, let's see if we go back to, let's see which chart was it. So this slide here, so right now we're integrating with Solometer and can pull uh, metrics from there. We don't have integration with Minasca yet, but that was something we were looking at doing. So once that line turns from dash to solid, you know, we could look at where your information, you know, where it's stored in there. And then, I mean, ideally that would be all you'd have to do is get it in there. And once that, once that piece was done, then that information could be and made available and could be used maybe for Maybe find you on IRC or something and say we're 
publishing this stuff. Yeah, yeah, we could chat on IRC know. and actually kind of t uh, uh, dig into that. But that's kind of a cool thing about this, is that if people are pushing their data into these other sources and, and we give you out-of-box integration with that, then it makes people that actually want to go ahead and build strategies and whatnot around using that data, it makes it pretty seamless. And I had one other question. I, earlier talk, we, um, I learned about Congress. Is Congress on your radar? As yeah, a project? I mean, Antoine, have you talked yeah, to them? Uh, yeah. Actually, though, we had quick discussion with Congress. I saw the team is here. Um, uh, I think uh, if you just come back to the uh, loop here, uh, we have something called the constraint on top. So we know that at one point we should prob probably uh, um, add, uh, exchange with Congress to get all the SLA thing. I mean the 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 the, the, the constraint the, the constraint that uh, the administrator has put on the on the on the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We need we need to get them and then. Uh, put them into the, the decision engine. So that's possibly another path for my data. I published to Manaska. Congress has some kind of um, policy that they're monitoring. They see that um, some you know, microburst has happened in a switch. They end up pushing something back into Manaska that ultimately uh, you would notice in that original pipeline we were discussing because it's a maybe an alarm or an event that's yeah. like screaming there's a problem, or possibly Congress is feeding into the optimized bubble itself. Yeah, right? uh, okay. I think this is- Multiple a, routes. Yeah, this is a use case I discovered just two days ago, so yeah, I yeah. think, yeah, there is yeah, something Yeah, I discovered here. Congress this morning. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think both <laughs> of those- That's why we're here, right? <laughs> yeah. Both of those could be true. I mean, just as an example, that one of the constraints we deal with today is things like if, if people are familiar with instance groups within Nova. Again, that's where I was talking about the affinity and anti-affinity. When Watcher is actually trying to figure out where to move a VM to, we delegate to the Nova scheduler, and, the, and so that kind of implicitly feeds in constraints, and so eventually we could have some sort of integration there with things, uh, you know, like Congress and whatnot, to, to help make decisions that honor everything you've set up in the cloud. Okay. Well, anyway, we're interested in playing with this and yeah. talk to you guys offline about it. Yeah, yeah, come hunt us down in, in IRC, that'd be great. Sure. Let's just go back to this. Yeah. Thank you guys for, for, for your talk. I, I'm just curious, is there much difference between uh, optimizing VMs or and containers? Is there any challenges with that? Uh, well, yes, there's, I mean, yeah, Watcher can be very flexible. Right now we're actually focusing on optimizing, you know, we're looking at, you know, really the compute nodes and, and then focusing on a lot of the virtual machine integration. So being able, I mean, for example, being able to um, live migrate and resize. And, and I don't know, I mean, maybe somebody knows. I mean, last time when I was originally reading, I know like some of the containers weren't migratable. Maybe that's changed now. Um, but you know, you need to be able to shift resources around and do some of that. Uh, we've talked about doing optimizations in a container space, but right now we've kind of been focused on uh, you know, on, on the virtual machines. But I think a lot of the, the same use cases could apply there. But you know, so that's where we've been spending our effort. Um, and we'd love to talk to you if you have a specific use case. So I yeah. read up on the, you know, trying to, uh, on the concept of a rebalancing com uh, containers. And based on what I can understand, it, you know, you can, you really, it, it sounds like you just kill them and set them back up. Or either that or you don't migrate them. And so if you have any use cases where you would actually m migrate or move containers and how you would do it, you know, come and talk to us and, and we'll be happy to actually add that to our use cases and understand how that would fit into the overall architecture. Thanks. Yep. Hi, uh, thanks, uh, very interesting presentation. Susan, I, I think you mentioned like uh, you were interested in the possibility of applying machine learning to, um, uh, to watch her. Yes. Uh, but I mean, if I understand correctly, it seems like uh, some of the monitoring functions would be done outside of Watcher and then you would Use Watcher more to make the policy decisions or make uh, you know some some actions based on um, kind of distilled data that's coming back from the monitoring. So wouldn't the monitoring more naturally fit with the machine? Uh, sorry, the machine learning uh, stuff fit more naturally with the um, the monitoring function rather than you know directly at Watcher level. So I, I guess it depends. It, you know, so the external, I was talking about the external system. So the external system, like the uh, trusted analytics, are also has access to the data. And actually, we were just talking about, you know, using that, whatever, the scoring engine coming out of those uh, in Watcher. So you can kind of look at them as like, look at Watcher as, or at TAP as publishing 
the scores into Watcher and Watcher using those to make its decisions as part of the strategy. I mean, ultimately, it would be nice to know, right? I mean, a lot of the way Watcher works now is more retroactively, right? And, and it would be nice to get to a model where it could be proactive, right? I mean, that's, you know, that's really the, the future use case is to be able to, um, you know, make changes in the data center before the problem actually happens versus waiting until it hits that problematic point and then, and then doing things. So that's kind of why we were trying to get that integration there is, is to avoid that problem, you know, before it happens. But it just seems like you'd want to put it as close to the data as possible. Yeah, that, no, that's a fair point, too, yeah. yeah. All right, th thanks. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> oh, I uh, was very excited to learn about Watcher. I'm, I'm with Serbo. We actually uh, specialize in placement analytics in virtual cloud environments and, you know, mostly dealing with VMware environments where DRS is there, so we're kind of looking, is there an equivalent component in, in OpenStack? Um, so my specific question is, uh, you know, you, you showed the outlet temperature uh, plan, uh, and, and I'm wondering, well, how does that uh, work with potentially all the other constraints you might have? Like when you pick a VM to move, how do you know that VM is actually movable? And when you pick a uh, hypervisor for it to go to, how do you know <coughs> Nova Scheduler, you know, might not have a rule against moving it there? Um, so, so this it, was a very simplified version of the mm -hmm. algorithm. If you go and look in the algorithm, you will see that we actually ask for, ask Nova for um, what nodes are available and what nodes are actually, uh, you know, so we make sure that we don't violate any of, uh, violate any of the constraints. So we, it's, we're not just moving stuff willy-nilly, we're actually mm -hmm. making sure that we are not breaking any of the constraints that are already set on the VMs. Excellent, thanks. And then follow-up questions too. So once the recommendation is made and there is an action plan, if that for whatever reason fails, is there some kind of feedback loop to that saying, okay, I'm gonna try something else? Yes, yeah, so uh, not yet. So this is something we are working on, the uh, applier, you know, it, it was in red. So this is something we need more uh, work on this because uh, we, we just, today, we ran the action plan and if there's something failed, we just stopped the action plan. So it's very basic. Uh, and we are looking at rollback actions and so on. So this, this is, in, the, in, the, this is in, our, in our roadmap, but yeah, it's not available today. Excellent. Thanks and, a lot. And, and, and I think, though, just to add to that, I mean, you know, you start running this plan if it fails, and that's kind of what I talked about. You know, it's a cloud, so things are very dynamic. And so the idea is, okay, eventually you get a new plan and it can run and continue to try to make things better. And, you know, so we just hope that it's always, even a li if, if it's a little bit better, the state of it is a little bit better than it was before, we're happy. And then you just kind of keep running some of those things too, so. Okay, cool. Oh, great question. Okay, anything else? Please go to the microphone. <laughs> So I'm kind of wondering where the boundary is between using AODH in OpenStack and triggering alarms based on some conditions like high temperature or some cache starvation and then um, an action plan for that. So that could be achieved with AODH and uh, Congress. So where is that division of labor between Watcher and Congress AODH type of stuff? And unless we're learning the algorithms or the machine learning, I mean, it could be kind of accomplished with the alarm business and the Congress business, see? I mean, a lot of those are also based on, like you said, they're, they're generating, you know, okay, an alarm, something got, exceeded some threshold, but, but then what? I don't know, I mean, you have to kind of figure out what, it, I mean, where, where Watcher comes in is then trying to take action. I don't know, does, does, you know, does that actually take, and, and take actions based on that yet at this point, or is it just? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, from what I've learned this morning, that you said a set of conditions. It's somewhat algorithmic, based on data that's coming in, and then it you can attribute an action with it. So yeah, it sounds like there might be some significant overlaps. Yeah, I mean, I know we looked at that at at one point, and I mean, is that is a lot of those set at say a host level, or, or is it more an alarm yeah. at, at? There's Congress people here. You is said it a VM. I mean, maybe they could speak anything. better. 
than I. Yeah, I, there, there were some things when we started looking at where we were trying to find some differences in, in that mission and you read that, but I mean, that's a fair point and we could actually try to, you know, try to hash some of those details out with those folks. Right. It's a, I mean, it's a very interesting space and that's the thing is that, you know, um, you know, you know, at IBM, for example, we were looking at a lot, some solutions in this space and, and you know, um, there was a lot of stuff out there and that's kind of what really interested us to try to just come together and I think get everybody talking to hopefully build something so we have an open source, an open stack based solution that can do this because at the end of the day, you know, it's something I think OpenStack can really use. So, I mean, we're obviously, all of us with, with Watcher and everything yeah, else are really interested in I think we're in entering the era of metrics and, and analytics and and actionable items, it's becoming quite obvious at the summit to me. Yes. Okay, well, I think are we about out of time. Okay. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank everybody's you. time. <laughs>